Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Catacombs of Kural. This is a solo and cooperative adventure game based on the Relic Blade Adventure Battle Game system um, and features a multiplayer or solo player experience where you go through procedurally generated rooms uh, where you basically have a final showdown with a boss and escape from the catacombs that you've collapsed into. Now you can play as good guy and bad guy, adversary or advocate models, and your team is randomly generated at the start of the adventure, which I already did on my uh, GMG review of this rule book, so you can check it out. Um, and we're about to do the crash down encounter. This is basically where we fall through a crevasse during a fight and we're forced to cooperate, good guys and bad guys, to escape from this like sort of labyrinthine dungeon and temple complex underground. Uh, back up to Corral where we can continue killing each other, I guess. <laughs> so this is written by Malev, um, and you can see some of the DNA of his new release, his first game with Black Side Studios, which is Demon Ship, in this idea of like randomly rearranged rooms and components uh, and a sort of like episodic adventure through various rooms to like a conclusion. So there's a lot, you can see a lot of his original ideas sort of like kind of bubbling up in Relic Blade here that turns into Demon Ship. Um, and we're gonna give it a playthrough. So I'll show you the table, I'll show you the models, and we'll get this underway. All right, so here I am set up for some Clash Down Collaborators. This is the first mission, um, and all of the four encounter um, Catacombs of Corral adventures will start with this. Um, I did my random character draft, so I put in four advocates and four adversaries. I did this during the uh, GMG review. And my initial group is going to be a um, Ogre Ready Eris, a Bounty Hunter, a Iguan Marauder, and a Hellhound Berserker. So I got an even split between evil, or sorry, advocate and adversary um, characters, uh, and they are here all ready to set up and crash down into the catacombs. So basically imagine the ceiling collapses in this room, and we all plummet in and surprise a bunch of guards. The storms of Corral reached their violent climax, the catacombs far below shudder with fierce anticipation. The mountain heaved as rival champions clamored and clashed in the ruins of ancient temples. At the fateful moment, the slopes above the rivals exploded, and the floor gave way beneath them. In the furious maelstrom of storm, uh, stone and storm, the lost champions plunged into the deadly depths. The day's survivors, once rivals, now stood as desperate allies, surrounded on all sides by the horrific denizens of the dark. They are forced to put aside their bitter differences or be forever entombed in the catacombs of Corral. So this magic encounter uses one large room and one small room, so they're basically placed together. Now I'm using the MDF train uh, for the catacombs from Schooner Labs, a Canadian MDF company, uh, and I've zhuzhed it up with some cool paint jobs and mossy ground and stuff like that. Uh, the rest of the stuff is the Relic Blade um, actual like uh, like braziers. Uh, these are, I believe, Pegasus Hobbies, and this is all old GW train that I kind of like botched together. Set up this encounter uses one uh, magic ring, which is set up over here in the corner, a clan warrior, two lizard hounds, and the exits. The exit is here, this doorway. The exit begins uh, locked. It can be unlocked with a scenario action, which is a five plus. Um, and I'll remove that doorway um, when it becomes unlocked. Uh, that's actually a doorway from an old GW, I think, Warhammer Fortress, actually. Now, the bad guys, just we have uh, clan warriors. They are two action, five movement, two armor. They have a clan weapon, which is a four plus for a plus three damage. They can take four damage each, and we start with one. Uh, they have a beastly howl. Whenever an Og Soul warrior is disabled, their uh, nearest ally gains a dodge token because they howl as they die. Now, these are the actual wild monster cards for Catacombs of Corral, which means they're not the cards that are used in Standard Rock Blade. They come in the Og Soul expansion set. Uh, this is the Catacomb set. So we randomize where they and the Lizard Hounds are deployed. The Lizard Hounds have uh, two actions as well. They're faster with six movement, but minus one armor. So they're one armor instead. They get a gore on a three plus for two damage. They're tough. They recover on a five plus and they have three health each. Oh, injured state. They just die when they die. So um, the first one we'll put down is a clan warrior. There's three spots they can be located. Corners of the room and in front of the door. So D3 it. Left to right. Uh, it's gonna be over here. So in that corner. Uh, then the uh, first lizard hound, we'll just go one, three, four, to six. Be in front of the door, that means the second one's over here. So the characters arrive using the stagger method, which means you put them in the middle of the table, and then they go random direction. I'll use a D10's top to show the direction, uh, D6 inches. If they collide with each other, they count in combat. So two inches from the middle, will be the ready Eris, just slightly at an angle. Uh, the bounty hunter is gonna be six inches into the corner. So she'll stop at the wall there, uh-oh. Uh, then the Iguan Hunter will be one inch from the middle, just here. And finally my Hellhound Berserker, three inches towards that magic ring. As you fight, the alarm will be raised, so it is important to keep track of turns. So on turn, I believe three, uh, more bad guys begin to arrive. 
So two lizard hounds arrive to a maximum of two. Round five, two clan warriors arrive to a maximum of two. And then round seven, one clan warrior and one iron breaker arrive as the alarm gets raised. Deployed, we're ready for round one. Um, so now in round one, we will start with our first activation. I'm gonna start with his Ogre Redieris. Um, he's going to attempt to activate. Now the activation charter's here and characters can be out activated, um, but it, depending on the roll by monsters. But on a five plus ready for action, the character activates as normal. So my Redieris has four action dice. Um, I'm gonna spend one to charge, I think. He can charge three inches. So he's gonna charge and engage this guy on elevation. He will attempt to entangle. So that was one. He has his free action to charge, so he can spend an extra dice um, to make that charge action a um, uh, a two dice, or no, actually, do I want to use a two dice action? It's one to charge in. I get a free action dice to attack. I'll spend an extra one to make this two dice on the trident. And if they're both a four plus, we hit. I didn't even get a four, I just missed. <laughs> Good job. Uh, we'll hit again with our trident because we can do times two attacks. It's range one inch. And we still miss. And we'll spend our last token to dodge. Good job, Ogre Ready Eris. You were ready for action indeed. Next action, we will go with the Bounty Hunter, staying next to the Clan Warrior there. A four means a predicament. One random monster triggers and the exit locks. The exit's locked. Um, the uh, random monster will do one, two, three. We'll D3 to cross the way. So this uh, Lizard Hound uh, activates. It is unengaged with two bonus AD to charge the character nearest the door. So it's going to move in and charge the Bounty Hunter. And it gets two bonus AD, so one to charge, and that means it's gonna focus its attack. Because it only gets one, so on a three plus, two dice attack, definitely a hit. Uh, it is plus two damage, and that means that the Bounty Hunter's armor of one will attempt to block plus two. So it gets an eight, the bounty hunter gets a three. She takes five damage and is downed. Oh my God, immediately downed. <laughs> Good shot, bounty hunter. Then I guess the marauder goes and attempts to activate. What do we have happen? A one, the worst. Spawn one lizard hound to a maximum of two, then two random monsters trigger. Well, there's no more lizard hounds to spawn and then two random monsters trigger. So one will D3 again. Uh, so this one's gonna activate. Uh, it has... One bonus AD to attack if engaged. So it's going to attack the Ready Eris on a three plus, because it's a three plus with plus two. Hits. Uh, the Ready Eris is armor two. So blue dice is always the armor dice. Uh, that's going to be a five to a four. So he takes one damage. Ow. Uh, I guess he could spend his dodge. He might as well. Uh, he adds one, so that's going to be zero damage. One more mo random monster activates, so one to three, four to six. It'll be the clan warrior, uh, and that's if unengaged with two bonus AD to charge near his character. So it can't charge down models, so he's going to charge uh, and go... He's speed five, so he'll charge actually the closest model, which would be the Iguan. Currently activating. Uh, so that's going to be uh, terrible. Uh, with two bonus AD, that means he focuses his attack, looking for fours. He gets it, it's not a crit though, because they're not both fours. Uh, so it's 1d6, the Iguan's armor is a mighty two. Uh, so he'll get a five to a nine. So the Iguan takes four damage. Oh my God, that's great. One, two, three, and four. So immediately becomes crippled and loses an action dice, but I guess can start stabbing. Uh, so can make a scimitar attack on a four plus. Try and hit that clan, uh, clan warrior, miss. Can make a scimitar attack on a four plus. Crits, all right, so there we go, extra D3 damage. Um, so the base damage is gonna be at plus three. Their armor two, so that's an eight to a seven, and it gets the bonus. Uh, so that's gonna be a total of four damage. That'll knock it out, because that's a 10 to a eight. No, wait, hang on a second. It's flat, flat plus two, so that's an eight to a uh, 10, because that's eight plus two is 10. So it's actually just gonna be two damage. So that guy gets badly jacked up. Two dice attack, then it's, um, cause it's more rare, it's D6 damage. All right, so that is uh, one action left. I guess that Iguan's gonna dodge, cause he wants to not die. Berserker, buddy, we need some help. Get get in the war, two. Uh, one random monster triggers. If there's no monsters in the play area, then spawn a lizard hand. All right, if engaged, one bonus AD to attack. So random monster, D3 it again. This guy uh, is unengaged, cause the bounty hunter's already there. So that's gonna be two AD to charge the nearest character, which will be, I think actually the Hellhound this time. So he just charges the Hellhound. Two dice attack on a three, lands it, and then uh, Hellhound only has armor two, uh, but he laughs it off. That's gonna be four to a total of six. Came over here, now you're dead. 
<laughs> so the Hellhound's gonna go. He's gonna spend an action just to stab that guy on a three plus with his gut spiller. He sure does, and he crits it for plus two. So this is plus five to the armor of one. Uh, that's a 10 to a three. He just explodes that guy. He will just do a smash to like bash its head in. And a four, now he misses. Uh, he's gonna pick up the ring for one. And then he'll gut spiller again. <laughs> that was uh, that was a bash. Picked up the ring, gut spiller, three plus. Just finish that guy off. Sure does. <laughs> uh, D six. That's gonna be a plus five. It's armor one. It's dead. So hilariously, he's got the magic ring. Now people can actually get to activate. <laughs> so starting with this um, this lizard hound, it's just gonna try and focus an attack because that's what it does when it has uh, the actions to do so. And it hits, so the Ruddy Eris takes a plus two attack, he has plus two armor. Uh, he'll take one damage from that because he has no dodge tokens, because that's going to be a total of five to a four. So he takes one. The clan uh, warrior's going to go, he is badly jacked up but not quite critically hit. So he's going to focus and attack the Iguan. Uh, and get a hit, and then he is plus three, the Iguan's plus two. Oh, it does one damage, the Iguan's disabled. Everybody's on the ground. <laughs> Everybody's hurt. Recovery phase, does the bounty hunter get up? Sure doesn't, so she does get to crawl two though. So she'll crawl two towards the exit. Ugh. Because if she's within two at the end and she's disabled, she gets away. Uh, the Iguan, do you grow your tail back? You sure don't. You also get to crawl two over to here towards the door. Ugh, please stop hitting us. All right, round two. Uh, well. Round two, things aren't going great. We have a bunch of down people, <laughs> which is never good. So the Hellhound Berserker generates four still. The Ready Eris generates four still. Uh, this uh, Lizard Hound generates two, and this Clan Warrior also generates two because he's not quite crippled. Round two, next round more guys show up, so we need to get the hell out of here. Um, we're gonna start with the Marauder, I guess? Oh no, they had a dodge. I could have actually dodged that last one. I added one, I actually did dodge that. Barely. She's awake. She's not downed. I forgot I had a dodge token on her. She is alive. Um, so she didn't crawl away because she's still standing. Uh, so she actually gets three. Eight. Let's go with her first and see if she can survive. <laughs> she needs to kill that guy. She activates with a four. So predicament. Um, if engaged with one bonus AD to dodge. So this guy's going to dodge. Uh, sorry, it's a random monster. So one to three, four to six. Four to six. So it is, it is actually the uh, clan warrior who will dodge. Dodge token. And they'll use it automatically. First opportunity. So the Iguan's going to go with Scimitar. Uh, he will focus strike with the Scimitar. Let's see if we can push him off. Uh, it's a lands a hit. And then how much damage is it? It's plus three. Uh, the, the, the clan warrior just gets away. <laughs> and then the Iguan will dodge with its last action. Try and stay alive. Let's go with the Ready Eris. What is the Lizard Hound? Do we trigger it? We don't on a 5 plus, just goes off. Uh, so he's just gonna try and explode this thing by focus stabbing. So just focus Wicked Trident. We do hit, but we don't crit. Uh, it is plus 4 damage though, and that thing's armor 1. This should just, ex yeah, just, just, just detonates like a bomb. Um, so that's gonna be a... Uh, they're tough though, they come back on a 5, which I don't love. That's going to be a uh, total of 10 to 3. This guy just suffers existence failure. And I think what we actually do with our last is we actually spend this on a charge. We go and try and save the Iguan. Because we can charge 3 and we have a 1 inch reach, so that's 2 and then 1 more. Uh, so we're just going to poke ourselves in here. And be like, hey, get away from my friend. Three dice to attack. On a four, we crit, so we're, we're plus six damage, and it's plus two. It will dodge, though. That's an eight total, and then it gets an extra d6 for its dodge token. Uh, it gets a total of nine, so it's actually okay. Dodge. Uh, and then last but not least, we will dodge as well. Hellhound Berserker, get to work, buddy. Four plus, so somebody, random model dodges again. That's going to be you, because you're the only person who's not uh, dead or downed. And I think, <laughs> unfortunately, we're beasts, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can't actually do the scenario action, because I'm a beast. I can't do it. I'm just too freaked out. Uh, so I'll move three to there. 
and then I'll charge because it's what I do. So my second action, I'll charge. I'll just go, just go try and merc this guy. Um, and then do I focus? No, I'll just save it. Plus, got him. Got spillers plus three. Uh, he does have a dodge token still though, so that's going to be a seven to a four. So he spends his dodge. Uh, and gets a seven as well and ties it. Spiller again on a three, he's out of dodge tokens now. Oh, I crit, so I'm plus five. So plus five to plus two. Uh, that's an 11. <laughs> yeah, this guy's this guy's not having a great day, so he's also downed. And we're just gonna leave him, because other guys are gonna show up and we don't wanna get outnumbered. Let's dodge with our last one. And it's uh, recovery phase, does the bounty hunter get up with a six? Oh, so close. Just crawl two more to be next to the door and be like, guys, I don't feel good. I got I got lizard hounded. It's top three. Is that Iguan come or the lizard hound come back? It doesn't on a five, and then the uh, clan wear on a six. No, they just they just keep crawling away. Oh god, oh god, please, please leave me alone. This thing just cowers. Another lizard hound comes back into a random deployment zone. Uh, D three across. It just shows up over here. It's like, whoa, hey, 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 didn't I kill you? Iguan's back to having three health. We got four health on the or, uh, four actions on the bounty hunter, and four actions on the ready Aris. I did enough damage. It's only if I damage an enemy without disabling them that I get my health back with blood sport. So I, even though I like, I just murked this guy. I disabled him, so I didn't get any extra health. All right, uh, who wants to go first? Uh, let's just go with the berserker. He's just he knows what his job is. So activation roll a one. Uh, spawn one legend to maximum of two, so they're both on the table still. And then two random monsters trigger. So only this guy's gonna trigger. So if unengaged, uh, charge near his character. Well, that's convenient. He just comes to me. Goes, hey, what are you doing? I guess I needed to spend that dodge token anyway. Attacks with an extra AP, so it gets the free action and it focuses, so it hits me with plus two. Armor two. Oh, that's a seven to a seven, so he's fine. He can just, he's, I mean, he could use his dodge token. Yeah, he does. Because uh, he's gonna lose it in a second anyway. And we just, we're just gonna, just gonna beat the brakes off this guy. <laughs> we'll, we'll focus, stab him with a gut spiller. Sure do hit him. Uh, and then it's gonna be plus three. Oh my god. Uh, so a two to a four. So we do two damage. We do beat him up pretty good. Punch him again with one more die. On three. No, we missed. Uh, and then we do uh, just a bash on a four. That one crits. Attack, so it's plus two now. Uh, plus two to plus one. Uh, we sure did kill him, so he's disabled. He, just, he misses, so he just bites it. <laughs> he's just a, he's just a monster. You guys are down, so we can go actually get some work done now. The Iguan's gonna activate. Uh, on a two, attack, a random monster triggers. If there's no monsters in place, spawn a lizard hound. There's already a lizard hound. Uh, two lizard hounds on the table, so they can't spawn. So... Which is a reason to leave them. Like, just leave them bleeding on the ground. Uh, so I have three AP, so I'm gonna go, I lose my dodge, I'm gonna go two, three, and I'm gonna go two, three, and then I'm gonna go two, three, and just be next to the door. Be like, ugh, this sucks. <laughs> and the ready Eris is gonna go. Uh, four, so that's an activation. Predicament, uh, if on engage with two bonus AD and charge damage characters, so nobody's there. Uh, and the door's still locked. <laughs> Uh, so then we're gonna go, uh, we have four AP, we're just gonna go stand in the middle of these two jerks with our first one. We'll just stab him on the ground on a four with our free AP because we charged it. We sure hit it. Uh, so he's plus two to plus four. Uh, that's gonna be an eight, so he's just downed. Later, nerd. He'll swing around and stab this guy with the trident again, and he'll focus to do it because we might as well just try and hit on a four. It's a two dice attack. Yeah, crank that guy. Stab him in the next week. <laughs> so it's gonna be a plus four to a plus one. Yeah, that guy ceases to exist. That guy's a, a kebab. Watch for his last one, just in case it all goes wrong. Not leaving a lot of survivors for him to get his blood sport off. <laughs> he just, he's, he's not, uh, he's not worried about these lizard hounds very much. All right, it's round four. <laughs> we've, we've successfully murked the room. Uh, bad guys show up again on round five, so we can probably get out of here. Um, let's see what happens. The Iguan's gonna get three. The Bounty Hunter, oh sorry, does the Bounty Hunter sit up on a six? No. It says four, and the Hellhound Berserker has three. Or sorry, four as well. All right, let's see if the Iguan can do this. The Iguan's gonna focus, try and complete the scenario action on a five. Doors open <laughs> on a five. 
So we get the door open. Fantastic. She's gonna leave with her last dice and be like, get me out of here. We need to make a scenario roll still. What happened? On a four, uh, predicament, a random monster triggers and then the exit locks. Oh, sorry, did that lizard hand get up on a five? It didn't. So that lizard hand crawls away. Um, and then the door locked, but it was already locked at the start of the turn. So then she unlocks it and leaves. So now we hope it doesn't lock again because I need to get this hell out of here because he can't open it himself. Yeah, he's good. So he's just gonna truck out of there and be like, later. This is the ready Aris get out because he's not great at opening things either. Four plus, so random activates, the door locks again. He's gotta go figure out how to open it up, which probably involves just kicking it. So he's gonna go uh, one, two, over to here. And then he's gonna focus. Uh, I'm not gonna try and focus. I'm just gonna try and roll this five plus. Because if I do it, I can leave. No. Do it again. So I'll just sit here and be like, whatever, bounty hunter. Maybe you can stand up this turn. You just activate because they're all downed. Does she recover? She doesn't. She just crawls next to the door and it's like, protect me. Round five, more bad guys show up. The ready guard is going it alone. Well, I guess he would have dodged at the end of that activation. Yeah, because he had one action left. Because he went, he tried He tried to do it with the, um, a single die. Spicy, two clan warriors show up now. Uh, so deployments, we'll D3 it. Uh, so the third one just shows up next to him. What's up, man? Just in combat. And the other one, just next, just in combat, it just shows him immediately. It doesn't count as a charge, oh sorry, I think one has gone. Uh, it's you. Just just shows up fighting him, just drops out of the ceiling. That lizard on recover? Does not. <laughs> All right, um, so top of five. Yeah, we've just got the ready Eris and a down bounty hunter. Can you, can you get yourself out of here, buddy? Because I can't perform the action while you're engaged. So what happens? A one? Oh my God, spawn a lizard hound to a maximum of two. So it arrives in the middle, <laughs> like right here. Um, and then I get to go. Two random monsters activate. So uh, D3, uh, two, it's one of the clan warriors. Uh, it's engaged, it just attacks with a bonus AD, with one bonus AD attack. So it's just gonna attack him on a four plus. It hits. Uh, it's plus three to his plus two. Now uh, he'll spend his dodge. So it's a five to a five, so he takes one damage. His dodge. And D3 again. Sorry, it'll be D2 this time. So one to three, four to six. The lizard hound goes unengaged. 280 to charge the nearest character. I don't even know if he can fit. I don't say he can. He'll go over here. Rah. Oh, no, he can't. He tries. Then sits there. Ready, Aris? Um, you need to kill everyone. <laughs> so you're going to focus, attack one of the, the clan warrior that, I guess, just either one. Doesn't matter. Left. You sure hit. Uh, you're plus four to his plus two. That's a nine to a five. So that's four damage. So you down him. So you don't heal like a jackass. <laughs> two, three, four. But you just crush his skull. One dice hit the other one on a four. <laughs> you crit him for plus. You're just a killing machine. You leave no survivors. Um, you were plus six. That's a nine to an eight. So you do one damage. So, so hooray. You actually heal. And you do one damage to this guy. But you don't actually kill him. Monster face, uh, your last one, you are still engaged, so you dodge. Monster in time, so uh, we'll start with the clan where it's engaging him. He will focus his attack, because he still has two AP. He cranks it for plus three. Uh, ready Aris is plus two. Ooh, that's an eight to a three, five damage. Ooh, dear. Now we'll spin our dodge. Uh, that's gonna be one damage instead, thank God I dodged. Get him mad, and then the uh, lizard down can't get in, so it just moved dodges. That's all it can do. Tries to get in, and then dodges. They're back to a wall. Oh God, here, stand up, open this door for me. Nope. And lizard hound does. Ah, oh, crap, it's back. One health. The full gamut of bad guys are here again. Turn six, no more monsters show up after turn seven. So maybe the Ogre Ready Ears can fight his way out of this. He's got four action dice. Bound here still on the ground. His activation, what happens? A three, uh, predicament. One random monster triggers and the exit locks. It's already locked. So random monster, there's four of them now. So I'll reroll fives and sixes, counting left to right. Reroll fives and sixes, counting left to right. Actually, there's three, sorry, because one's down. So it's going to be the Lizard Hound. Uh, so can't be engaged, so it just charges the closest. It's going to go six. And it's going to go Bork Bork and be in behind. Here it goes. He's going to stab the other unwounded clan warrior uh, on a four. We'll focus stab. 
Hits. Uh, he will be plus four to plus two. That's a nine. So that guy again suffers like existence failure. Unengaged, so I could open the door, and I will. I'm gonna focus open the door, and hopefully let the, what's her name, escape. So it opens, and that means in the recovery phase, she's gonna be able to crawl out of here. I've slapped the absolute bejesus out of these two clan warriors. So the two lizard hounds could go, but they can't do anything. So they're just gonna both be dodging. Can't get past the slumped corpses of their friends. So it's turn seven, somebody else shows up. The Breaker shows up. Just the Breaker, because all of the clan warriors are currently crawling on their bellies. Oh, let's see if they recover. The first one on six. Oh my god, it does. Comes back with one, so I'm engaged again. The second one does not. Uh, does, sorry, I, I would do hers first. And she doesn't, so she crawls out before anything else happens. Clan warriors is now awake. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, and then, uh, where does this guy spawn in? One, she comes crashing onto this crate. Wait, that's the clan chief, it's this guy. The breaker arrives. Iron Wrecker time. All right, well the Iron Wrecker gets two, the Lizard Hounds get two, that one clan warrior that's not, not dead gets one, because he's just barely alive. The Heroes gets four, and it's all him. Come on, buddy. Get out of here, just, just, Absolutely murder this guy on a one. Oh my god. Everybody goes. So spawn a lizard down to maximum two and then two random monsters trigger. So going left to right, there's four active monsters. I'll reroll fives and sixes. So one, two is this guy. So he's just gonna move and charge. And then use his extra bonus dice to attack me. And he's gone now and he can move over there. So bonus dice to attack on a three. Crits me plus D6. Oh my god. D6. Whoa, I think I'm dead. Plus two? That's a four to a uh, 13? <laughs> yeah, Red Ears is down. That was bad. Man, that was, uh, that was not great. <laughs> um, I can, I think I'm gonna have to use a Fate Weave action at the end of this turn. They never go after me now, so the rest of their activations are irrelevant because they won't attack a down model. Comes down to my, I'll use my, these are all once per campaign. So I'm gonna just use my plus three to recovery roll. Four plus I recover. I sure do. I'm back up with one life. <laughs> that means I have three AP. Round eight, uh, cause they had no target to go towards. So they wouldn't even activate during the turn. So the clan wrecker gets two again. The lizard hounds get two. Including the one that just woke up. Uh, the clan warrior gets one. Uh, did the other clan warrior wake up on a six? He sure does! Oh my god. This right here is in so much trouble. This is your moment. I need you to get out of here because you're my tank. Yeah! Everything's great. The door's not locked. You just need to down both these clan warriors and this guy. One dice all of this. Um, so on a four plus, the uninjured hound. Nope. Uh, on a four plus, the injured clan warrior. Nope, on a four plus, the other energy clan warrior. Oh my god. Okay, uh, that was it, that was your turn. Now they all attack you. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, I guess I could have tried to break off. Physically fit anywhere, so I actually can't break off. Uh, I needed to kill that dog. All those attacks were into the dog, because then I could have tried to break off. Let's see if they kill you. Uh, so, focus attacking. Actually, we'll just have the clan marker go. He's gonna move 10 and just be in behind everybody. That's all he can do. Uh, focus attack for that lizard hound. It hits. Plus two to plus two. This is down again. <laughs> just stand around. This is, this is insane. Do I get up on a six? Come on, Red Eris. Nope, lose him if I don't do this. So I'm going to have to diverge. Come on, dude, just give me the six and stand up. Yeah! All right, this is the last chance. Like, I won't be able to come back and do this. <laughs> He's going to be dead and the scenario will be over if I don't make it out of here. So... Hmm, I have three, I have three action dice. I can burn Quicken to get an extra action dice for four, which I think I'm gonna do. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> Both these stupid clan warriors are out, which means I have to kill everyone and then dodge. Okay, well then that's what we have to do. Uh, we're going to stab that hound on a four. Oh, sorry, we're gonna see what the action is. Five plus I can do all my actions. Things looking good. Hound, you're getting a trident. You're getting a trident. Okay, we hit you once. Uh, we're plus 40 or plus one. Oh my god, seven to seven. We don't even do any damage. Uh, 
nothing here is going to help me. <laughs> I think I have to restore my critical health box. <laughs> I think that's what I do. I think I actually do that instead of my plus one action dice. That would have been smarter. Because I would have netted the same result, I'd still have four action dice, and I'd still be alive. Okay, well I didn't kill you, and so now I guess I... Attack? Just bash? Like, that's all I can do. Bash. No. Uh, and then I dodge. I could have focused dodge too, actually, I guess, but that's it. Alright, well, uh, hound! <laughs> you bite me. Focus bite me because you're the healthy hound. The other one watches. Uh, so focus attack on a three. It sure does get me. And then I'm plus two. Uh, I'm good. Seven to six. I'll spend my dodge. Alright, first clan warrior is going to attack. Focus attack. It hits me, but no crit. Uh, and then... Uh, I'm a plus two to its plus three, so I'm going to dodge. I get the dodge off. Uh, I take no damage. Last one hit me. Focus attack. It sure does. You stick the landing. You could do this. Hold tight. Yeah! Plus that's going to be a five to a four, so I'm okay. Like turn nine. <laughs> um, and let's see. I've got four action dice. I, I spent this to heal my critical after I recovered. So can I can I get a five plus and not have the door lock in front of me? Actually, even a one would be fine. Maybe if I don't die. <laughs> okay, sweet. And a monster's trigger. Come on, back of the pack. Uh, one to five. So one to five left to right. Yeah, the damn hound goes. Uh, so it's gonna be on a three. It hits. Doesn't stab. Doesn't. Sweet. One to four. You roll on five six. You roll five six. You roll five six. <laughs> it's the clan warrior. Not force though. Also misses. Fantastic. So now you just, with your four action dice, or ready, Eris, you just need to perfectly kill these three guys and then run away. Obliterate this hand. Roll four. Yeah, that's what. You, that's how we do. Plus six to plus one. I think I just obliterate it no matter what I roll here. But I, but I roll a 12 to its two. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, it's on the ground. It's impaled into the wall. So just roll a, roll a trident hit again on a four and kill a clan warrior. Yeah, it's okay. Red here is so pissed. He so doesn't want to be down here. He's he's just unhappy. So does he punch this guy in the face uh, with a plus six? Yeah, he sure does. That's uh, ten damage to to four. So that guy's now down. All right, last one. We gotta bash this guy though. First to me, I'm just gonna focus disengage. <laughs> I have two dice left. I'm just running at this point. I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah, I do. Bye. <laughs> Later. He just goes through this door and says, "I don't I don't want to be here anymore." Holy crap, that was... I burned half my Fate Weaves just getting out the door. These guys just just absolutely wrecking my day. <laughs> Making me regret all my decisions to come to the Catacombs of Corral. I was actually really lucky I rolled the one uh, because almost everything else locks the door. <laughs> there was no way I had the AP to do that. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, victory conditions, the encounter ends when all non-disabled characters have escaped the player through the exit. Uh, rewards, survivors recover one health, so everybody gets one health back, hooray, which is good because everybody got jacked up immediately. One upgrade from the upgrade deck and equip it to an eligible character, so the upgrade deck is here. We can shuffle, we'll cut it real fast, and we'll see what upgrade is. We've got optimized armor, reroll defense rolls of one. Well, that can be given to anybody, so we're giving it to the ready Eris, because he's my tank. Short rest action, draw a card from the encounter deck and begin your adventure in the dark. Each player can perform one of the following actions. There's only one player in this, so I can only do one of these. I can tend wounds, recover up to two health my character your control, forage, roll a d6 and claim a random treasure. Uh, it's either a noxious bomb, or a healing herb, a health potion, a magic ring, or a raven brooch. Or meditate to restore use of all spells and tactics. I'm not going to worry about that one. So, I could forage and maybe get a healing potion, which could heal more. Or I could just straight up just heal somebody too. I think I'm going to heal the, the Iguan too. Up to one. Because the Red Eris can heal by fighting, potentially. I could sit back and shoot with the Bounty Hunter instead, and just not get into melee. So now we're over to the actual encounter deck to see what we're actually, like, what our next room is going to be. And then that'll be the end of the adventure. We'll know what our next encounter is going to be, and we'll move on to the next a piece of action. Give it a shuffle, we'll cut it again, and then draw the top. The Noxious Bomb. Playing scenario number one. So scenario number one will be our next adventure as we fight our way to the first room. I mean, historically, I die in the first room every Warhammer Quest game, so this this tracks. <laughs> this is on on brand for me when I play adventure games. 
So here we go, a look at the Catacombs of Corral, solo and cooperative adventure. Again, completely card driven, which I really like. Uh, no bookkeeping except for the cards in front of you. And in absolutely true to form fashion, I got the Holy Spirit completely knocked out of me in the first room. Um, and we'll be on to room number one, conveniently enough, as I dealt out my room deck to find what the treasure was gonna be and what that was gonna be inside. And the, the adventure will continue for three more episodes. Uh, we draw three more cards in the third card. So there's two more cards after the next one. And that final card will have our boss encounter. So um, we'll see you in two weeks for the next one. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a great one. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements, like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.